Welcome socialites. If you are listening to this on Apple, iTunes, or Spotify, you are listening to the Modern Mystics and Motherhood podcast, the Grounded and Glam Modern Mystics and Motherhood podcast. My name is Erin. I go by Erin the Urban Mermaid. And if you are watching this interview, you are watching this on my YouTube channel. So I am a mother, a writer, intuitive empath, fifth dimensional soul guide, esoteric healer and spiritual business mentor. I am the founder of the Grounded and Glam series, um, which is a um, monthly membership for my fellow empaths and light workers to help them along their spiritual and their personal development journeys. I am also an intuitive tarot and birth chart reader and a practicing Reiki master. I want to thank you all for joining in today. I'm very excited. I have my first guest on. I've been so excited to bring guests on and I cannot think of a better person. Um, I'd like to introduce to you guys a friend of mine. Her name is Kay Elizabeth Wood. Um, Her company is called Luminous Alchemy Co. And she is an intuitive counselor, transpersonal coach, and a soul guide. So I am really excited to have Kay here. Um, I met Kay about maybe like two years ago now on Instagram, and she's been really a huge part of both my spiritual journey and my motherhood journey. Um, So Kay and I have something in common. Well, we have a lot of things in common, but um, (laughs) the main thing that we have in common and what we kind of want to touch on this episode is we both have children who are autistic. Um, We both have sons who are autistic. Now, I've never come out and said Bryson is autistic or um, anything like that. I've I've never said that. Um, He got his diagnosis in July over Zoom. Um, So I have spoken about his spiritual gifts. I have spoken um, that he is a very gifted child. I've said mentioned that he's had disabilities. Um, But really, this is where we are now. And um, both Kay and I have learned a lot on our journeys and she's much farther along than I am. And she has a lot of insight. And, you know, one of the big reasons I really wanted to do this um, interview with her. And one of the big reasons I wanted to bring this, you know, to a more public forum um, is I realize it's part of my spiritual mission to bring not only awareness to the, to the spiritual gifts and, and what comes with autism, but offer some kind of support for parents like Kay and I, who really didn't have a ton of that when we embarked on all of this. Um, So that is something I'm looking forward to bringing to the table. Um, But for now, let's talk to Kay. Um, Hi, Kay. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. So I have a couple little icebreaker questions before we get into um, the depths of our episode. So the first one being, what is your sun, moon, and rising sign? I am Capricorn with an Aquarius moon and Mm -hmm. Ryan Leo. Yes. Yes. (laughs) That's awesome. I'm a wealth of fun. I have all the fun things. (laughs) Well, that Leo and Aquarius is really fun. (laughs) It's actually the Capricorn and Aquarius that I find really contradictory because it's like Capricorn Mm -hmm. is so traditional. I do everything by the law to the point. Mm -hmm. And Aquarius is like flowing. Right. Well, so it's (laughs) I know. Life, I know, yeah. right? And Ca- that Capricorn is a hard worker. The Saturn will break your ass. <laughs> yes. What is? Do you have a favorite crystal, and um, what is it? Okay, that's a funny question to ask because I have literally like an office. I collect them. Um, I love. I'll say three. Okay. Just quickly, that I think have been most important and imperative for my healing journey this year. First one is what I, um, what I know to be Siberian chariot. And it's a stone that I had never heard of when I first Mm -hmm. went to this crystal store in Vancouver Mm -hmm. where I lived a few years ago. And I said, Oh my God, this thing's so cool. What is it? It was like kind of neon purple and had black little squiggles in it. And I was like, why is this thing so expensive? And the crystal God was like, Mm -hmm. you know what, this will take you on some really, really deep things. And even though it's small, it just has so much power. So Mm -hmm. essentially, um, I was really sick for the last few years. This year has been by far my worst year with sickness. So Mm -hmm. for me, this is all about, it was transmuting illness. It was just kind of assisting when I was super exhausted. Like when I just couldn't get by, Mm -hmm. um, trying to like, 
you know, live life with my son and just do, the, do everything I needed to do. Um, it stimulates cleansing the body. It's good for grounding. Um, I've actually, I've never heard of that one. It's amazing. You have to get it. Okay. The coolest <laughs> thing about it, the coolest thing about it is for those of you that might not be into it, you can do astral travel or you can have the most vivid, <laughs> intuitive dreams of your life. Like oh I my put under, no joke. I, put I don't know if I could take that up pillow. another level. <laughs> I put this under my husband's pillow and he was literally like, oh my God, I had the craziest dreams last night. I do not. I've never had dreams like that. And then I laughed. I'm like, see, I told you. Yeah, crystals like you powers. powers. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Another one that was absolutely amazing is it's um I want to I always forget like how they actually call it but it's like the phantom quartz okay and they call it that because there's all these different minerals that come into it and combine you can get them in reds and greens but it almost looks like there's angelic beings that are inside of them unbelievable for me why that was so imperative to work with this year was because um it really helps to let go of past traumas. And, you know, as we're on our healing journey, sickness, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. traumas are essentially what's next. So yeah. this really assists with letting that go, um, facing the shadow, address. Um, it kind of helps you go through, um, like in my psychological world that I learned through mm-hmm. schooling, they call it post-traumatic growth. So it kind of helps you like, gain that momentum of power when you want to move out of all these traumatic experiences. So it not only allows you to assist it in moving those things out, Mm -hmm. but it helps you to kind of take the power from that healing and then propels you forward into the next stage. So beautiful. Absolutely love it. Last Mm -hmm. one I will say was angel, um, sorry, Azurite. Okay. I have a giant piece of it actually here in my office with me right now. I have this big. Oh yeah. That's beautiful. And, um, it's just, I really think it's like just stepped up my level of trusting my intuition, intuitive insights, really downloading everything that I needed to. Like I was forced to be on my ass this year. Like Mm -hmm. I was go, 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 go for the last decade. And then this year, and it was so cool. I would have it with me. I would hold it on my chest Mm -hmm. or just speak with it beside me and get the craziest downloads. So Sorry, I went a little. Uh, no, I, you, just, you taught me a whole. Bu- you just taught me a whole bunch of stuff. I'm like, now I need these crystals. Yes, <laughs> that's awesome. So, Kay, you also are an intuitive, and you do the tarot and oracle. Also, you've actually given me great recommendations. So, what are your favorite tarot and oracle decks? <sighs> I have probably fifty decks. I <laughs> honestly. It really depends on what mood I'm in that day. I can't yeah. say that I really have a favorite. I can mm-hmm. say right now, the ones that I'm working with the most is the um, Elena Fairchild Isis Oracle. Mm-hmm. I just completed my practitioner program um, that Elena Fairchild had through her sacred mentoring and soul guidance mm-hmm. program just like literally two months ago. And uh, I love her decks. She has a white light Oracle. She's a mm-hmm. light workers Oracle, which I know we talked about before. Yeah. I, I love can, that deck. I can not like believe how insightful all of the messages that she brings forth. And not only that, but the messages that you receive from yourself when you. Yeah, are. I agree. That's that deck is um, that's a really I, powerful one. And the deck that we actually had to work with in the program was the crystal mandala Oracle deck, which oh, I have that one too. Mind blowing. Love yeah, it. I, yeah. In general, you cannot go wrong with Alana Fairchild's deck. Agreed. Like Agreed. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's just a wealth of all that knowledge and good stuff. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of hers. Okay. So um, I kind of want to bring everyone in a little bit about your spiritual journey and like where you got to the place you are now. So if you could kind of give us, you know, just some background about your journey and just so we can kind of get to know you a little better. Okay. So Cole's Maltz version, I'll try to go really fast. <laughs> I, I came into this lifetime and I think as a young age, my mom said, I used to have these experiences and they couldn't explain it. Like my mm. parents are very traditional. My dad is atheist. Doesn't, mm. he's not into the whole spirituality thing. So when I was having these experiences, when I was little, it was all about, okay, well, 
you know, that's not real. That didn't mm-hmm. happen. I was talking to a man downstairs or I was seeing like wolves in my room or I was seeing mm-hmm. angels in my room and I didn't get believed. So little by little you stack it up and you mm-hmm. stop believing. And from three years old, I was full-time competitive figure skating and ballet. I did it until wow. I was 18. I had, um, like I was perfectionist control freak competitive to a T like Capricorn. Goals, I wanted to go to the Olympics. Nothing mm-hmm. was going to stop me. And then had the worst year of my life. My dad almost died. My papa passed away and I almost tore my Achilles figure skating. My whole world crashed. Like I was going to the top. I wanted to be this professional figure skater and mm-hmm. dreams got crushed. So that was the year that I started getting spiritual experiences again. Mm -hmm. But because I had gone through so many moments of um, just dealing with the trauma of what had happened, because of my level of where my vibration held at that point, it was, I was getting negative energies coming in around me. So Mm -hmm. I was kind of living in this house where I would see really scary things happen. Instead Mm -hmm. of seeing it in the light, I was seeing it in a terrifying way. Like these ghosts are haunting me. Oh my God. I'd have these terrible nightmares. I'd have these terrible sleep paralysis experiences. I was freaked the F out. Mm -hmm. I went to this Reiki master that I knew who is unbelievable here in Calgary. Mm -hmm. And I said, Kevin, I want you to like, shut it off. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see, I don't want to feel, I don't want to sense. I don't want to hear. I don't want to know, like, please, I want to go on with my life. And I don't want to see this again. Like it Mm -hmm. terrifies me. I just, I wasn't in the right mental state. He did that. And little by little, my lifespan, trying to find love and acceptance, trying to find who I was in the world of Mm -hmm. myself outside of everything that I knew myself before that. Mm -hmm. And anyways, that catapulted me into eight years of addiction and trying to find love and acceptance. Mm -hmm. Um, And then eventually losing that addiction, Mm -hmm. working really hard, having my son, and then everything's kind of just fell into place along the way right. and we'll talk about that later about yeah that. yeah for sure for sure um and if you don't mind me asking how old were you when you had Cruz I was 27 27 okay cool 35 now <laughs> just about next month yeah yeah 35 club right here <laughs> yeah. awesome cool so I kind of want to now touch on the whole spiritual journey, autism journey. Um, just, I want to hear all about it. Um, so if your spiritual and your, your parenting journey coincide, how they coincide, um, the lessons, the shadows, I want to hear, I want to hear all of it. Um, I really feel that this stuff needs to be shared more for parents like us, um, because we didn't have that. And I don't think people even realize this stuff, you know, Um, so I want to hear a little bit about, not a little bit, I want to hear all about that. (laughs) Okay. So to start off with, um, when I think you were kind of saying about like my personal spiritual mission Mm -hmm. in life, how that coincides with my mission as a parent. And as I mentioned, we're going to go on that journey a little bit Mm -hmm. later on in this, but, um, to kind of put it in layman's terms for me, what I want to help others through is taking like I I call myself the alchemist I'm the luminous Mm -hmm. alchemist I want to take dark and transmute it into light I believe a thousand percent in balance I believe in the yin and the yang and the light Mm -hmm. and the dark you can't have one without the other one does not exist without the other so I feel like it's my mission in this lifetime to help people heal on each side because Mm -hmm. one might be living too much in the light they Mm -hmm. think while they're struggling with all these shadow things, Mm -hmm. ego that coming up. Oh yeah. And vice versa. And another might be so stuck in their hurts and their traumas and everything that they've been through that they can't even fucking see the light. Like it's so far away. So my mission, I believe in this lifetime is to really just bring people back into alignment Mm -hmm. to look at everything that they've been through in their lifetime symbolically as a lesson what has this trauma taught me? What has this thing that I've been through mm-hmm. taught me? What, why am I here now? Right. And how that coincides as a parent is I went through the shadow side of mm-hmm. early on becoming a parent. I went through those deep, dark moments, didn't know when I was going to be able to see the light. 
I struggled through many different situations as a mom and I came out the other side, seeing the light. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but I feel that I have seen all these things within my son along the way, along this journey. And I see him as my greatest teacher and I want to be a teacher to him. And I see how everything as a mom has happened symbolically for me. Mm -hmm. And again, back to that light and dark experience. So I think Mm -hmm. that's just how it coincides. I like that. Um, I, and I agree with you about the light and the dark and, and that's taking, you know, I, I talk about, and I try to live from a fifth dimensional consciousness place all the time. And in that is really understanding that there is, you know, both sides and you, you have to work through both of them to Mm -hmm. get yourself to that, you know, elevated state of consciousness where you come from a place of love and you come from a place of neutrality and, of course, I, you know, I agree um, about, you know, your children always being your greatest teacher. It's funny, you mentioned before um, on your spiritual journey, when you were a kid, you used to see things, but you, and you would tell your parents, but they didn't believe you. Not mm-hmm. only did the same thing happen to me, um, you know, I also would always get readings and stuff pretty, like, pretty consistently, I'd say, like, the, since I'm 18. Um, and w- when I was in this phase with Bryson, um, when he regressed and he was like, just kind of stuck and it was like, lights are on, nobody was home. Um, I, I went to a good friend of mine and I, she's a psychic medium. And I said to her, you know, this is what's going on. And you know, it, 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 it's really hard. I was in a really hard place. And she's like, you know, your son is really gifted and don't be surprised if one day he comes to you and he says, mom, I see this, this, that. And the reason he chose you to be his mom is because you're going to accept it and embrace it. Whereas your parents were like, no, that's not real. So, you know, and I'm a believer, you know, our children do choose us. That's a hundred percent, you know, thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So, um, I want to hear like about some of the real situations that you've been in, like with Cruz, um, you and I talked a lot about the label of autism, um, and I said, you know, I haven't, I haven't come out and say that, said it to anyone really. Um, so Bryson was diagnosed, like I said, in July because of what's going on in the world right now. It was over Zoom. Um, right. Not that I think the diagnosis would change in person. I do think he would do better in person because it is, you know, it's hard for a regular person to be on Zoom. Forget about a three-year-old um, who's, yeah. who's delayed. Um, and so for for me with the label. Um, it comes with um, um, a lot of shadow work that I had to do myself. Um, mm-hmm. Bryson's Bryson in, in my story, in our journey, Bryson um, is, I know, autistic as a result of inoculations as a child, mm-hmm. as a, a little baby. Um, mm-hmm. So, and I never wanted to give them, them to him, but the doctor, you know, convinced me I was a new mom. I'm a, I don't have my own family out here. I don't have like support and you get scared, you know, and you think you're doing the right thing, but I really went against my own intuition. Right. And so that kind of snowballed for me a lot because that's the first time that like, I almost feel like, well, look, you didn't listen to yourself and now look what happened, yes. you know? Yes. Yes. And then that led to a lot of, I had to do a lot of heart chakra work, um, which, you know, a lot of forgiveness of myself. Um, and then coming to a place where I even had to like, not hate his pediatrician and be like, okay, <laughs> This person really believes that what he does is helping. He's not a bad person. You know, he's a nice man. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to get, you have to get past this in order to help your son heal. Um, And that, that was really like my first, first real experience with all of that. And Bryson is the one who actually brought, brought me back to, I would say the spirituality and helped me find my own gifts. Okay. So, sorry, what do you, you want me to talk about? Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the, the label and just your own experiences with Cruz and how maybe the label can bring up the shadow work or, you know, anything you can share that would um, help people out uh, just who are, who are going through this, you know? So, to kind of start on my story, um, mm-hmm. my son's turning eight now and okay. he is fully functioning. Mm-hmm. Um, when he was first diagnosed at two years old, um, I had gone through a phase where 
I knew something was wrong, but it was too early for the doctors to say, okay, he can't. So I would go in and say, he's not talking. Mm -hmm. He's not doing this. And they're just like, you know what? Some kids are a little bit delayed. Just wait a little bit longer. And little by little, I just started to see like the lights were on, but nobody was Mm -hmm. home. And it was just repetitive things. And eventually Mm -hmm. after six months of going to doctors and telling them, can you please just give me a referral to somebody, anybody, because there's too much going on. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. I'm working two jobs. My son's never sleeping. He's Mm -hmm. not talking. He's not learning. There's something going on. So I finally went to this doctor's office for this, this, I think it was like the seventh pediatrician. I said, listen, Mm -hmm. I am not leaving here until you give me a referral to somebody that can help me. Right. So she sat through it with me and I did it through private. I really feel Mm -hmm. for the parents that have to go through, you know, government funding, because by the time they get the diagnosis, the child is usually too old and then doesn't receive funding to get what they need. We did it through the government. Well, because if it's, I don't know about where, because you're up in Canada, it might be different. So they have one program for before three and one program for after. And before three, it's like something that's totally covered no matter what, because like you said, it's, it's hard to get a diagnosis when they're small. You never know. They, they come up with the like, oh, some kids are later boys talk, you know, later than girls. He's going to pop off one day. So we did do that. And that is, um, as much as I, I, you know, I'm so thankful for the help. I will say the administrative part of it and the getting the things to go is like next level. It's hard. two months wait, three months wait. It, it's that part is that becomes really frustrating for a, a parent. It's super frustrating. Mm-hmm. And I think going back to the label aspect, mm-hmm. when, when Cruz was diagnosed, so he was two and a half mm-hmm. and I had never been so terrified in my entire life. Like right. they gave me a diagnosis. He was low functioning, moderate autism and, or on the spectrum. Mm-hmm. And I just went, mm-hmm. my whole world, I felt yeah. just went like, I didn't know what to do. I was, mm-hmm. I was not living in a spiritual place. I was work, right. work, work, trying to be a mom, work, 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 trying to be a mom. Mm-hmm. And I just felt so out of control for mm-hmm. somebody that was such a control freak. I was like, Oh my God, what am I going to do? And the thing with the label is it was just like, I had this issue with everybody in the autism community. Like you go into this and go, okay, my child has this diagnosis and where am I getting this information from? And typically it's from society mm-hmm. who the autism community who is telling you, you need to normalize your child, right? You need to do every single thing you can to normalize your child. So Mm -hmm. guess what I did? I researched every natural path, integrative doctor, Mm -hmm. diet, Mm -hmm. treatment, everything I possibly could to just normalize my child. Because I thought, I don't want it to be hard for him in the world. All these parents are saying he Mm -hmm. needs to speak. He needs to do this. He needs to do this, or he's never going to have a life. So for months, I just struggled. And on top of that, I, I really use that label often because Mm -hmm. from my own woundings of not Mm -hmm. feeling enough growing up and wanting to be seen as perfect on the outside, I struggled like going to the playground because he wouldn't play the other way that the kids did, or Mm -hmm. he would have a tantrum trying to go to a birthday party because he wanted all the balloons and other kids didn't understand that. And it just was like, it was so, so hard. So for me, the label is just, it makes me sad because so many people hide behind it. So many people say, Mm -hmm. this is, this is my, this is my child. This is all that they are. And I need Mm -hmm. to fit them into this box. And that was my biggest lesson um, you know, and I, I've told you, I've talked mm-hmm. to you all about my biggest yeah. aha moments when my son wasn't sleeping all night. I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do. I turned mm-hmm. on Abraham Hicks at like two in the morning and mm-hmm. popped up autism video about, you know, the soul of autism, why it happens. A mm-hmm. frantic father was speaking all about why is my, why do I have three sons on the spectrum and nothing's changing. And it all came back to he didn't understand unconditional love. He understood 
love with conditions Mm -hmm. and labeling and fitting everything he knew into this box. Mm -hmm. I went, holy shit, (laughs) that's, that's what I'm doing right now. And then on top of that, she went into the whole mirroring aspect about, do you notice that your sons are mirroring anything to you? What do you notice that's happening them in them mm-hmm. that is also happening within yourself? So that was a, a huge thing. Like it was, I want to say, I'm trying to, I'm trying to say this. So for me, I was going through a point in my life where I'd fly off the handle at everything. I was angry. I was enraged. I didn't have emotional regulation. And Mm -hmm. that was my son. Cruz could not regulate his emotions. And I know we've talked about this with Bryson. And he he was unable to communicate. I could not communicate in a way that was healthy communication. I just couldn't do it because I was so overtired. I was overworked. I was just about to say the exhaustion part too. I mean, people, people don't realize when you're not sleeping and your kid's not sleeping, um, how much of a toll that takes on every aspect of your life, every, every aspect of your life. So for me, that was like a really, really big thing about, okay, I need to look at that, this, these things in myself. I need to look at, I don't love myself unconditionally. I don't even like myself right now. I looked in the mirror and saw a monster because I was raging out all day, mm-hmm. every day. Right. And I almost became to start labeling myself. So when we talk about labels, mm-hmm. like that was really hard to drop. Yeah. And, for sure. and I know, you know, we talked about the playground the other day. Yeah. Your instance, right. And yeah. it's like, how do you, well, it, you know, it's, it's like what you were saying, like, we'll go to the playground. Um, Bryson's thing is the swings, but you know, at some point I got to get him off the swings. You know, we have to do something else. We have to let other kids have turns and yeah. he'll like fly off the handle. He'll hit his head. He'll bite. He'll this. And so in some instances, especially if it's in public places, I, you know, I, you feel like, fuck, you know what I mean? Like, other kids aren't doing that. You, you feel like other parents are looking at you. And I think that that's a big shadow also, because your first thing is to be like, oh, he's, he's autistic, you know, like it's almost like an excuse in a way, you know, totally. or, or, um, the plane ride to New York. I've spoken about that. And I mean, that was like a disaster. Thankfully, like everyone was really cool about, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, um, when really I should be like, why am I explaining this? He's a kid. He's not their kid. He's not hurting anyone else right now. You know, he's, he's, you know, I'm sorry if my, I'm not sorry if my kid doesn't act like, you know, these perfect, and I'm going to actually bring this up. Um, as, as much as I love and appreciate social media, because honestly, I would not have a platform without it. So I have to do give thanks for it. People, post on social media about like their perfect families or their kid never tantrums or their kid sleeps like this and you it affects you you're like damn my kid doesn't do that and before we had like the diagnosis or before he was even in the ABA therapies and stuff like that when he was like 18 to 24 months that's where the real um regression was and and the non-progressing that's really where I saw it Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like look at my like blogger friends and all that stuff. And I'd be like, oh my God, why does their kid do that? Why does their kid do that? And I think that that really takes a toll on people. And if if I can express anything to anyone listening is um, delete anyone who makes you feel like shit. Number one, Mm -hmm. two, you, those in Instagram and stuff is just an image at the end of the day. I've seen people in real life who post about their perfect kids and their kids are not so like, oh, no, no, no. no. That's yeah. And, and so you shouldn't beat yourself up because I did that for a long time and I would be like, why, why, why? Mm-hmm. And it's no, tough. Totally. And uh, for Kate, there's two things I want to talk about. First, okay. I don't know about you, but when Cruz was going through his initial stages of his diagnosis, I researched everything I possibly could online. I, I'm like the philosopher. Like I want to take in information and then Sagittarius in your chart. Cause Sag is the philosopher. (laughs) I just just want to learn all that I can, but Uh it was so interesting to me because everything online was focused about the deficits, the cures, Mm -hmm. negatives. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever talked about 
the teachings and the lessons and the gifts. So Mm -hmm. I mean, to the moms, to the parents out there that you go on there and you feel Mm -hmm. discouraged because you're like, oh my God, my kid needs to Mm -hmm. hit all these milestones and be this person. And all they're saying is all these things and you start to close and close Mm -hmm. and close and close. And that takes me to my next thing. I literally put so much blame on myself for a really long time. I sat there and said things like, um, you know, I worked too hard when I was pregnant Mm -hmm. because I was literally overseeing all these stores in Mm -hmm. a franchise. I was part of a big, a big franchise at the time Uh and franchise development. And so I worked too hard. I was working, I was putting in like a hundred, a hundred hours, every pay period. And Mm -hmm. I didn't sleep enough. I was too stressed Mm -hmm. out. I was anxious. I, I actually had to be on a medication while I was pregnant with Cruz. Mm -hmm. And then I started blaming myself. I, 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 it was my fault that he was a preemie. And not only that, Mm -hmm. but there were people in my life that also put that on me and said, this is your fault. You did do this. And it just crushes you. It crushes your heart. Well, they need to go. <laughs> you feel know? like you feel like, oh my God, like yeah. I I'm so sad. But on the flip side, when I came out of that and I said, I don't have to be sad because you know what? My son did come through this way for a purpose. Absolutely. He is here to be this amazing being that is mm-hmm. different because why be in a box anyway? Yeah. And he has his own gifts and his own light that he's going to bring to the world. Exactly. So it was really about, um, it's really just about don't beat yourself up. Like you said, Mm -hmm. I get it. Feelings come up when you feel guilt, when you feel shame, when you feel anger, when you feel sad. And my biggest thing that I can say, if I can add any piece of advice is Mm -hmm. feel it. Because yeah. unless you feel it, you can't heal it. And oh, I love that. That was my <laughs> that was my issue really in my parenting at that time because I just shoved and shoved and shoved. Yeah. I'm like, work, parent, try to sleep for two hours. Work, yeah. parent, try yeah. to sleep for two hours. And the more I did that, I shoved and shoved and shoved, and yeah. then the more rage would spill out. So right, and there's I, it's not a way to live like that, you know. Um, for me, well, what I feel happened, like I did, like I said, I spent a lot of time, um, not a lot of time, but I did, I was feeling resentment, a lot of the mom guilt, like guilt in general, a lot of like, why, why is this, you know? Um, and for me, when I started looking at Bryson's autism in a spiritual sense, it's actually kind of when we started clicking with things and things got easier and better for us. Um, Like seeing this as, okay, this is a gift. And um, I I think it might've been you or it might've been another one of my friends who told me to listen to or or do some research with, um, what's her name? Uh, Doreen Virtue. She does a lot on the rainbow children. And um, actually, I think it was you. And it it was actually my girlfriend who is one of my best friends in New York is an ABA therapist. Um, But Mm -hmm. she's also on the spiritual side. And she sees um, like a Reiki practitioner who was telling her about it or something like that. And after I listened to the audio book that Doreen has out, and who's she's actually a a former um, psychologist who left the field. um, Mm -hmm. Things clicked because in the therapy, listen, they are absolutely great. They teach you things that you really do need to know. But one of the things they'll say is like, you got to get on their level. And I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. I'd get on Bryson's level. I'd go on the floor with him when he's tantruming. I'd, I'd do my best to be like, it's okay. And I'm like, this kid is not hearing me at all. Yeah. So until I saw the spiritual gifts that are associated with it and realized, okay, autism is the 3D tangible word of what we're going to call him. But mm-hmm. in our world where we live in the more spiritual one, and it, he's a rainbow child. He has these gifts. And for me, that's what helped me. And that really was a game changer because I felt like I was like, it makes sense now. Oh, okay. And now I can go forward and I could be a little bit better about this. And, and, um, another thing that I had, like, I mentioned the exhaustion with you, exhaustion is a tough one. Um, 
I mentioned, I noticed the regression with Bryson between 18 and 24 months. I gave birth to Christian at when Bryson was 18 months. And yeah. so I had this little newborn who needed me too. And I mentioned, I don't have, a, I don't have family here. That's another thing, the support level. So, um, mm -hmm. You uh, were you? Do you have feel like you had your parents, or were they supportive? Um, you know the was, friends around you. I was really fortunate at the time for childcare mm -hmm. because okay. um, I had uh, I had like obviously Cruz's dad was a big okay. part of it, and um, Cruz's uncle helped during the day when I was working all day. Um, okay, I'm, I'm separated from my son's father, so. Okay it was really about like, I was working during these days and my son's mm. uncle would help. And then I'd come home, but it was like right to parenting, right to the six hours of tantruming right. and then right to trying to teach crews new things all while he's still doing the repetitive behaviors. And then mm. putting my little guy to bed, watching his little angelic face while he's sleeping I me know. trying to get two hours of sleep and then bam he's up for six hours a night and yeah. it's interesting because when I read the book the soul of autism mm -hmm. um, which I told you a little bit about before yeah. we started here today um there was a few moms in there that they said they had these um like extraterrestrial experiences or these mm -hmm. experiences that you know were uh, were of the spiritual realm and mm -hmm. essentially it was their, their children were up in the night and they were talking, they were talking and they didn't know who they were talking to. Mm -hmm. And it started with Cruz before he could actually verbally communicate when he didn't have his words yet. Was and he, he like was, waving and stuff like that? He was doing that. And a lot of just up all night, just making, he was like talking in his own communicative way. That's, like, that's what Bryson does now. He has mm -hmm. words now. He got words back, but it's, it's like their own language almost. Yeah, it was and he waves only. and I'm like, okay. And now at least I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. And then it, and then it became to a point that when he actually was verbal and he had his words and he mm -hmm. would tell me all these experiences, like mommy, there was a man in my room and he's doing this. And, you know, we lived in a hundred year old house at the time. So I was like, there's gotta be some form right. of <laughs> within this home, but he was seeing it. It was there, yeah. it was happening for him. Yeah. And it's just, it's so interesting that they're so connected. And I think a lot of it is because their energies are very different than very. children. I feel very. like they're not as grounded as in their bodies and they're more high mm -hmm. vibrational, which means that they're more sensitive to other, other energies around them. You just nailed that completely. Yeah. Completely. And I mean, how cool is that? Like, yeah. I actually get super frustrated now when people say, you know, if I say, oh, you know, my child's on the spectrum and I'm not even wanting to use the label all the time, but if the conversation comes up right, and go, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, why are you sorry? Like he's so, oh, I haven't cool. gotten that one yet. <laughs> he's so, he's so cool. And like, yeah. just, oh, it, it must be so challenging. And like, yeah, it is, it is challenging, but also like, holy crap, he's taught me so much. Right. I'm still learning. And yeah. Chances are, though, the, the person who says that to you, though, isn't in the same consciousness as you. So there's no point in getting into like, well, he's this amazing spiritual being because people are like, OK, you know. Yeah. And I mean, I when I did really embrace my spirituality and mm -hmm. got my Reiki masters, I did go to school um, to become, become a counseling psychologist. Mm -hmm. And because I wanted to combine the psychological with the spiritual world mm -hmm. and talk about my business a little bit later but mm -hmm. it was just so cool because I understood my son's issues with his cognitive mm -hmm. you know delays. and then I also understood where he was at on a spiritual level with his energy so right. for me I tried to use everything I could as far as my own modalities that I learned spiritually mm -hmm. like chakra healing doing mm -hmm. some Reiki on him at nighttime just implementing these yeah. different techniques that I had learned along the way that were really great for me and mm -hmm. I tried them on him and actually he started speaking better and I started doing things to open up his throat chakra and mm -hmm. guess what he became verbal people might say oh it was because he was in speech therapy but it's like yeah but he's been in speech therapy for a while and right and now right. I'm doing this and it's like it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming right 
Um, so I actually, I stopped taking Bryson to the regular pediatrician after kind of losing faith in Western medicine. Um, yeah. And I, I take him to um, my, one of my good girlfriends is a holistic chiropractor and she works with a medical medium. Okay. Um, so I once, like once a year since his, um, since like maybe he was two. So this is like this, my third time doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I consult with her. And it's funny that you say that because um, just right before this month, the last couple of months, Bryson had been kind of getting like out of hand again. And it was really hard. The sleep is really tough. Again, having another child and, you know, um, so right. I consulted her because I also, I do some like detoxing with him and, mm -hmm. you know, detoxing can have its side effects as well. So, you, you know, you yeah. really have to hit that one on the mark. Um, <laughs> yeah. And she said, she's, um, she suggested um, these grounding techniques for him. Yes. And so I took all the higher chakra crystals out of the bedroom, tourmaline, selenite, like all that stuff. Um, and now with his new ABA therapist, every day we like when he gets um, upset, we implement the um, the grounding techniques. And um, it's it's really interesting. I'm so glad that you had said that about the grounding and stuff like that. It's I really, really am excited for him to understand that because one of the, um, one of the like spiritual lessons she, cause she does like a whole report and, you know, she told me what vitamins he needs to be taking to support it and whatever. And she was like, well, one of Bryson's soul wants you to know he's not fighting you. Cause we were kind of like, you know, yeah, you know what I yeah. mean, the fighting and, yeah. um, the frustration. I think that's what I'm trying to say. She's like, Bryson soul wants you to know he's not fighting you. He's fighting him himself mm -hmm. spiritually. Like, and so at first I was like, no, no, I want you to embrace it. But no, again, he's three and a half. And one of the things she stressed is working on that grounding stuff. Yes. No, a thousand percent. And like I said, um, I did work with a medical medium. Mm -hmm. I've done almost 300 hours of mentorship under her. She taught me. I, I'm fascinated her. by it. Fascinated. I, got my, I got my Reiki masters through her, but when, mm -hmm. when she would tune into me and when she would tune into him and that's when I, I saw, and she showed me how their beings are so big. Mm -hmm. They're like exponential delight. I remember she took me on a meditation and she showed me Cruz's light and it was like, like amazing I, it went on and on and on and on so she was like you try to fit that energy into yes. this little tiny vessel and then you wonder why they're flying off the handle and she said yes there are all the tangible things in the physical world every single scientific mm -hmm. research textbook definition that can tell you this is why your child is tantruming yeah that right. might be but it also might be because his energy is this right. big right and i'm trying to fit it into this little right. guy he's just trying to find his footing in this world, this world. Oh. which is which is hard enough for an atypical child that doesn't have these spiritual mm -hmm. experiences so i totally get you and i i i applaud you for doing that with the grounding because yeah. not a lot of parents do and it's just another thing to try it really is and i mean everyone can use a little bit of grounding anyway. It's, it's so helpful. Um, you know, we all in our own lives, we're all energetically crazy. And this, like this being able to talk to you and for us to be able to tell other people, like what you just said about, we can't fit their, their huge lights into boxes. Mm -hmm. We just can't. And, um, that's what, you know, when school was coming up, obviously, um, I couldn't put Bryson into a school this year because of everything that was, you know, has happened or whatever. Um, yeah. I did some thinking and I was like, how do you feel about school? And I'm like, well, I didn't really love school growing up, but you know, that's not a good example because I was like, just, you know, a kid, a rebellious kid, but I'm yeah. like, school's really linear and school teaches kids what, what they want to know. And I don't have a kid that's linear. I have a kid mm -hmm. that's quantum. I have a kid who is right brained, um, who is creative, who, you know, he loves music and he'll color and he'll, you know, his energy is just, again, you know, endless. So I'm like, how am I going to put him in a school? Mm -hmm. you know? So that's, I mean, with what's going on in the world, it has bought me time to figure that out. But um, that's just one of the things I think about though, too. Like how, how can we fit? We can't fit these kids into that. that that's no, not I, I think um, 
I can't, I can only speak for myself because mm. I'm blessed that I, I found a school that yeah. not necessarily they're into the whole spiritual realm, but they mm. really focus on emotional intelligence. They really focus mm. on not only what the child needs to work on, but also plays on what their strengths are. I love and that. I just think it's like, okay, well, yeah, cruise as you say, if you're looking at it from, oh, I want my child to come out of school as a scholar and he has to have this GPA and he has to have this and this and this, that might not be him. He is behind academically. Mm -hmm. But then I look at all the other thing that he's advanced at. Like I sit here with my husband and we watch Cruise and he is like making film videos, Mm -hmm. got all these things going. And he's like a director. He's a photographer. He does all these things. And it's like, can I hire him? <laughs> and then I started thinking like, you know what? Maybe these special beings come in advanced and we're yeah. not giving them enough credit. Yeah. They're probably more advanced than us. They can probably teach us more than we can teach right. them. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I know. I love that. Um, do you have anything else you want to add about, um, you know, the autism journey, any any last advice you'd like to give in, um, anybody? I mean, I'm just so happy that we were able to have this conversation and shed so much light on this, this, our, I feel like our journeys, even though you started yours, um, before, cause Cruz is older, it's so parallel. And I'm like, wow, there are other moms out there like me, which means there's other moms out there like us for a few years ago who need to watch this and need to need to see this and know their, their kids are phenomenal and not anything else. No. And I think what I can say is never beat yourself up because you're going to have bad days. You're going to have days that you flip out. You're going to have days that you judge yourself and all that comes up. Mm -hmm. And my one piece of advice for that is to give yourself love and acceptance on those days because you did your very best. You showed up the best way that you could show up in that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, look at the lesson from that. Look at, do I maybe need to work on some things, ego, Mm -hmm. um, some emotion that needs to come up that I haven't dealt with? Do I need to delve into the shadows? Do I need to work with a healer to kind of help me work through that or even a counselor? Mm -hmm. It's so important to have support. And I think, you know, you and I are talking about how do we build this platform for women where we're not trying to judge individuals that see things as they just want to do it the ABA way. And they don't want to see anything outside of that because we can't speak for other people's experiences. So when it comes down to it, I, I hope that I can offer support. I hope that you can offer support Mm -hmm. to the individuals that they do question why, why does my child see it like this? Or Mm -hmm. how can I, how can I see this in a new light? And, um, I I mean, the list can go on. There's just, there's, there's so many that I've learned along the way, but I hope that my wish for people is to see that their children are not flawed. They are advanced, extraordinary beings that are literally shifting the paradigm. They're here to break up our conditionings. They are here to test every single thing that we have learned and known along the way. And for like, to you, to me, I don't care anymore if people go, Oh, you're, you're all spiritual woo woo. And like, that's not right. And (laughs) all I can say is just trust your journey with your child. Yeah. And it's okay. If people have a different opinion than you, Mm -hmm. and if people want to fit their kid into a box, that's their journey. For me, I now know my biggest Mm -hmm. lesson through Cruz has been, he came here. He picked me as a mom, just as you said, he picked Mm -hmm. his dad as a dad. And we are here to go through his milestones with him. We are here to learn his lessons and teach him what he needs to facilitate his mission in this life. And my hope is for all the parents out there that have children on the spectrum is to just see how can you allow yourself to constantly give and receive unconditional love, constantly Mm -hmm. open up your heart. And within that, help your child on their journey to their highest self. Because I mean, really that's, I I feel like that's my biggest mission is I'm here to navigate him to find not even just, 
he's going to find himself, but I mean, I'm here to navigate him along the path and just try to help him Mm -hmm. along. You're, you're his guide and he's your teacher. Right. Um, and that's what I really want because this is what I, what I, my, uh, goal, whatever is just not only to bring the awareness like this, do us doing this together, this podcast, this YouTube, this is a great first step. I want to bring it, you know, more and, and more bigger, whatever it is, because, you know, we didn't have that, this kind of support. And I'm just one of those people, then you got to create it and you have to help others because there's other people who are feeling the same way that you felt. And, and I know, I know for you, I mean, you had, you did, you said you did have a best friend that was like very spiritual. And for me, Mm -hmm. I had to continually consult with my mentors because Mm -hmm. my friends weren't spiritual. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, I love, I love my best friends, but at the time they didn't get it. They didn't get, and I felt so alone. I just felt like the walls were closing in. So it's like, Mm -hmm. I hope that we can help. Right out there that are struggling with that that don't want to just go to the groups that see right. things black and white and and understand that you know their children are highly perceptive and they're mm-hmm. sensitive beings and there's more to them than just trying to get them to talk trying to get them to do okay in school right. trying to get them to just live a normal life yeah it's so much bigger than that and right well while that friend of mine she is spiritual she is in new york you know i have one a handful of friends none of them are here with me in San Diego um mm-hmm. and I do feel that the people that are here do not see it the way I see it and that's why I need to bring it to a higher platform and you know offer this so that's something that is to come for sure for sure and something that I'm going to be working on um but let's talk a little bit about Luminous Alchemy Co and just some of the stuff you do with that and how you know you know, people can work with you uh, when you're ready or, or just some of that stuff too. So just a little bit about my background on that. Um, it was actually my son and my experiences with him that prompted me to kind of go on a different journey. I was mm-hmm. in franchise development for seven years. I was unhappy. Mm-hmm. It was business in a box. Okay. <laughs> so, so funny that it happened that way. How, mm-hmm. how ironic. Um, anyway, so being through all of that, I decided that I wanted to go to school for doing counseling psychology. I went to an absolutely amazing college that does the wellnesses. So you do physical, okay. emotional, spiritual, and um, mental wellness. Sorry, I okay. forgot one of them. And you do this eight month program of literally doing all that on yourself. It's all experiential learning. Wow. So you're literally like, you're purging your demons, you're meeting your dragon, mm. you're like, just- <laughs> putting out fires and all these things. So anyway, um, after I graduated from there, I decided I wanted to do learn more about transpersonal psychology. And that's just because it's looking at the whole being. Okay. It's looking at an individual and saying, the way that I relate it is it's as above, so below, as within, okay. so without. And you need to have this whole being in order to be in alignment. Okay. And um, anyway, so I kind of combined everything. I mean, my husband, my friends, they laugh at me with my witchy ways, but I'm Same. also, <laughs> I'm also very, I mean, I used to be stuck in my head all the time. I was all about like the mental side of it. So I thought, mm-hmm. okay, how do I take, you know, the spiritual woo woo as mm-hmm. people to be. And I know it's like becoming bigger in the world now. Everybody's it is. Kind of yeah. It. It's getting to be buzzy. But how do I kind of combine like the psychological aspect of it with the spiritual side and just help people through that, through their traumas. And I, I do so many things. Like I do crystal healing. I do Reiki. Mm -hmm. I do pranic healing. I combine all of these things. I do soul guidance. I do readings. Mm -hmm. And then along that path, I also help people heal their traumas. I work, I I do things as a professional counselor as well. Um, Mm -hmm. I will say I was, like I said, I've been quite sick for the last couple of years. I was very sick this year. So I did take a bit of a hiatus. Mm-hmm. I put everything on hold to try to just come back into alignment for myself so that I can right. be with clients. And I'm just kind of getting back into the thick of it right now. So, yeah. well, you. and I want to me- mention that you did one of your Oracle soul guidance readings on me and I was blown away. I didn't know what to expect because um, the way you like, so I wasn't sure, you know, I mean, I, I give readings, I've had readings, I wasn't sure. And I thought it was the coolest thing. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, like with Reiki and Reiki, you 
Kay's highest self could talk to my highest self. And she just put together this reading that like literally read my soul. And I was like, wow. <laughs> and it was incredible. And I was, I'm so thankful for it because there was a couple things in the reading that you said to me that I knew were things that had to get worked out ASAP before mm -hmm. I could even advance to another level mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Um, and like with all the shifts that are going on cosmically this year, and I knew I was never going to be able to get to my next ascension level unless I worked on those things. And um, mm -hmm. one specific thing was, you, I remember you saying, you, you're like, you have this one thorn in your side that that's, that's the, that's really bugging you. And it's, it's what's preventing you and you have to pull it out. And I did, I did. And it's been like so much, I felt like a balloon was deflated. <laughs> I mm -hmm. felt so much lighter. Um, and I just finished with what that was. I just kind of put a cap on it like the other day. Cause it was something that took a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, wow, now we have, we're going into this, a new year. And, you know, we have all these, you know, the, the, the eclipse season and all that. And it's, it was just amazing. I can't thank you enough for that. Um, oh, whenever you so you're ready to take clients, I'm have so many I'm, people who need I'm you. taking clients now. Oh, awesome. I'm definitely feeling strong enough to do them. They okay. definitely, they do take a lot of energy to do. There's a lot oh, of work. I could imagine. A lot of channeling, but um, the reason that I love soul reading so much, and I do combine tarot in there too. Hmm. I love the tarot. Um, the thing that I always felt was just missing a little bit for me personally in psychic readings was I felt like it was, it was fortune telling a future that was forever changing. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times my readers would say this, this is what can happen if you take this way. It's like, right. it's like you're coming to a fork in the road and it's like, you can go left and this mm -hmm. is the way that psychic reading is going to go. Yeah. Or you can take a, a right and go the other way mm -hmm. and everything changes energetically absolutely speaking. that's actually something I tell people who come to me for readings I'm like I'm telling you like this is what one one quantum path I see you make a different change tomorrow you put yourself on your own a different path you're never on the wrong path but you're putting yourself on a different path right so essentially the way that I like to do my soul readings is I I like to encompass the things you've been through yeah and the lessons you may have taken from that I know we touched on that a lot with you is you're like, mm -hmm. you know what? Yeah, I definitely went through those things and I learned so much. And then I talk about, okay, this is the things that you currently are experiencing, needing right. to go through and how that's just going to unfold with your path along the way. Yeah. That's what I actually loved about it. It wasn't like a, you know, your typical tarot or prediction type of reading. It was more like, it was more like someone telling me like, okay, these are some shadows that you're not addressing. And because you're not addressing them, you're not ascending the, to the place that you could be. Like you have the potential to be here, but you're getting mm -hmm. stuck because of X, Y, Z. And, and um, like you saw tendencies and stuff. And it was, it was just amazing. And might I add, it, you went, it was at least an hour long. Like you don't, you know, skimp anything. And I know you had your own pages and pages of notes. So it's mm -hmm. really, really very in depth, which if people are ready for that, I, I think it's stellar. It was so, so awesome. And I think like, for me, I'm happy to do something that's not as deep as well, but okay. I do really love to work with people that just want to cut the shit and say, mm -hmm. let's do this. I'm ready for a massive transformation. I'm ready to purge those yeah. demons. And then <laughs> face those shadows and then embrace the light and come back into alignment. So what I would love to do going forward, and I and I talked to you about this yes. um this past week is I you thought it was a good idea actually when I said I want to start taking the readings. And then after the reading, a lot comes up for the client. You said, mm -hmm. you know, this came up for me and this came up for me. So then I want to offer a counseling or a coaching session to just kind of help you move into that next stage, because it can be like, oh my God, I just got all of this information. Right, right. With it. You know, for somebody that's maybe not as familiar with right. spirituality or some of those really yeah, the processing, things. the processing can be like, where do you go from here? You know, that so I, I, for I, sure. I, I definitely want to be there to help through the process if they want that. Oh, that is amazing. And you are just, I mean, leader of the new earth, absolutely a light and someone so, so amazing. Um, what, um, 
can we tell everyone where they could find your website and just remind them of your Instagram handle? Uh, it is luminousalchemy.co on Instagram and my website is kelizabethwood.com. It is still a little few things that I'm working <laughs> on here, but you can still go and get the gist okay. of it. Right. Yeah. And they could always send you a, a DM or anything anyway. Yeah, so always send me a DM. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on and doing this with me. This has been amazing. And I just know that there's such great things and you are just, you're such a, a light, like I said, leader of the new earth, a being that is really needed during this cosmic shift and this new, you know, new time period, new timeline that we're all coming into. And so is Cruz. So <laughs> <laughs> Well, and honestly, I can say the exact same about you. Our friendship, I mean, has just been so supportive. It's been really nice to just have that soundboard of, mm -hmm. I can mess with you when something comes up and same with you. And right. we just kind of navigate through that together. And I, I really hope that, you know, we can do more things together, yeah. more of this to try to, absolutely. you know, really absolutely. I love today. that. I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining. And for everyone who's listening or watching, thank you so much. Um, Kay mentioned her website and her handle. And if you are looking to get in contact with myself, my website is www.erintheurbanmermaid.com. Um, and you could find me at the same Instagram handle and you could always shoot me a message there. So thank you everybody and have a love and light. That's what I want to wish everyone, love and light. <laughs>